I love Nami. I think she's great. In fact, the Nami stuff was one of the only things that I enjoyed about Whole Cake Island. I loved how we really got to see her in combat actually quite a bit in Whole Cake Island. Something we haven't really seen out of Nami and Robin in a long time. We've seen them fight like foot soldiers and stuff, but Nami took part in serious battles in Whole Cake. Hell, she even teamed up with Luffy to fight Cracker. And I think this is the only time we've really ever gotten a Luffy Nami team up. She kind of helped a little teeny wincy bit against Eneru, but this is the only time we've seen Nami seriously fight with Luffy against a major opponent. She also managed to land that one really good blow on Big Mom while they were running away from her in the woods. She helped Luffy fight off Big Mom's army until they were captured and it seems that they fought them off for a pretty long time. So yeah, while I don't really care for Whole Cake Island as a whole, it was a great arc for Nami and she got to do a lot of cool stuff. She was really badass, and overall, I really like her character in general, but even more so after how cool she was in Whole Cake Island. Now that being said, Nami's dream doesn't make any sense. When Nami announced to Bellamir and Nojiko that she wanted to draw a map of the whole wide world, everybody that was watching this show could think about how sweet that was, and what a cute little dream that was for a little kid, until you realize what Nami is actually saying. Now it's important to remember that Nami was a very young child at the time, so she may not have realized what she was saying, and also that her family was very poor, so she didn't have access to many books, so maybe she just didn't know what she was talking about. But then again, she was smart enough to map her entire home island. So you would think that she would be smart enough to realize how crazy what she's saying is. Especially considering most little kids in the One Piece world know how crazy her dream is. Nami's dream is to draw a map of the entire world. Now this is implying that a world map clearly does not exist in One Piece. Or at least a complete one with all the information on it does not exist. There are maps of most of the world, but every map is missing a couple things. Because otherwise, why would she dream of doing something that's already been done? We know there's a map that's at least complete enough to form a somewhat accurate globe, as we saw in the Ohara flashback. But since Nami's whole dream is to draw a map of the entire world, there clearly must be things missing on that globe and on all the other maps in the world. Now that brings me to why I think her dream is insane and doesn't make a lot of sense, at least before she joins the Luffy crew and decides to become a pirate. Now, since Nami wants to draw a map of the entire world, that would mean she would need to go to all the places that hadn't yet to be documented. Now, there is a certain area of the One Peak world that had clearly not been documented, because otherwise, people would have gotten there. Raftel. Whatever route Roger took in the area they traveled through to get to that island have clearly not been documented, at least publicly, because from what we've seen so far in the story, it seems like the area where Rastel is is completely uncharted. Nobody knows anything about it besides for the members of the Roger Pirates, and maybe people like Imbasama and the Five Elder Stars may have some information on it, but that is of course all speculation. As far as we are aware, the only people who know anything about the location of Rastel and know anything about that entire area of the New World are the Roger Pirates. So that is clearly undocumented information. Meaning to achieve her dream, Nami must go to Rastel. Now you may be saying, why doesn't this make any sense? Well, because let's look at Nami's character before she met Luffy and the circumstance she was in as far as she was concerned. First of all, it is never at any point stated that Nami abandoned her dream while she was with Arlong. Meaning it is very likely that she was planning on trying to achieve it after paying off her debt to Arlong. It's also important to remember that Nami hated Pyrus with a burning passion before meeting Luffy. It was only meeting Luffy that changed Nami's perspective on Pyrus. 
she even stated that she would not join a pirate crew. So that begs the question. How was Nami planning on getting to Rastel? Because, let's be honest, the world government is certainly not going to Rastel because of the Yonko. If the world government and the Marine could get to Rastel, they would go there. But as we know, no one can make a move to go to Rastel because the New World is ruled by Shanks. Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido, and anybody who makes the move for Rastel will be stopped by the other Nyoko. The world government making a move to try to find their way to the One Piece at Rastel would just result in one of the Nyoko attacking them and stopping them. So wait a minute, if the world government and the Marines can't get to Rastel, and Nami hates pirates and would never join a pirate crew, how would she planning on getting there? It doesn't make any sense. There's nobody really else in the world that could get to Rastel. The only two groups would be a pirate crew of some kind, or if Nami was to join the Marines, but then again the Marines can't get to Rastel. They've proven that by not going there, and I honestly don't even know if they know how to get there. Like, the sea isn't a straight road in a straight line. I'm assuming Roger had a really, really good navigator, just like Luffy had a really good navigator in the form of Nami. She certainly could not have been planning on putting her own, like, group of, like, people together that weren't, per se, pirates, but just her own group of, like, adventurers together to go and try to sail there, because she would have to leave that, and Nami, no offense to her as a character, isn't very powerful. People still, to this day, when she's a member of the Straw Hats in the New World, speculate whether or not she could beat Arlong. I just don't understand how she ever planned to go about this. Even as a child, she must have known how ludicrous this plan was. The only reason she's able to obtain her dream now that she has a realistic possibility of doing it is because of the Luffy. Now, some would argue that's kind of the whole point of the Straw Hat Pirates that Luffy brought them all together as friends and made their dreams possible. And while I do think there's truth to that, I don't think it extends to every single member of the crew. There are characters like Zoro and Robin who were already out at sea, out to achieve their dreams. Joining the Straw Hat crew just gave them a better shot at doing it than they had when they were alone. There are characters like Usopp, where it's made pretty clear, at least kind of like on a subtextual level, that he probably would not have ever left his village if he hadn't met Luffy. But with Nami, it doesn't seem like she just planned on hanging out in her village the rest of her life after she paid off her debt to Arlong. It seems very likely that she was planning on trying to achieve her dream anyway. I'm just not sure how she was planning on doing it. Nami's dream, if she had not met Luffy, is basically unobtainable. But it's not treated that way. It's treated like she always had this goal, and she just decided to complete it as a member of the Straw Hat Pirates, and Luffy increases her chances of doing it, just like it does for, like, Zoro. It's really weird, and I honestly don't think any of it makes any sense. But please, tell me in the comments, am I just some idiot that is clearly missing something that explains all these issues? Because honestly, I feel like Oda's a better writer than this to just leave something that makes so little sense up in the open. Also, if you enjoyed the video, you can leave it a like. If you want to follow me for updates on future videos and just stuff in general and you want to interact with me more, you can follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. Subscribe for more videos like this one. I want to bring you guys more One Piece content in the future if you enjoyed this. And above all else, guys, have a great day.